Well, hello and welcome to the Journey Exchange. These are short conversations that I get to have with people uh, discussing various issues that they face while on the journey of life. Today, I'm so excited to have my journey sister friend, Erica, and her husband, Curtis, who have such a dynamic story. So I'm not going to tell you what their story is. I'm going to let them tell it themselves. But hello, Erica and Curtis. Thank you for being here today. Hey, we're excited to be here. Thank you for having us. Yes, well, look, before we jump into like the nitty gritty, okay, um, how did y'all meet? Can we just start there? How did y'all meet? How long have y'all been married? Give us, give us the juicy details, please. So we met back in what, 2007? Yeah. I think we met through Facebook. I don't know, just Yes, y'all. yes. I was, um, <laughs> I was an app. Um, for college and he was at UNCC and that's 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 what I remember I don't know if you remember something different but that's what I remember. No that is exactly how I remember it she um reached out to me um he yes yeah, she, my ear for the week. Uh, she liked to cut on my jib and uh she was just like hey uh let's start conversating so that's kind of like how it started off you know the little uh high schoolish type of things where we were talking back and forth on the phone I'm back home like you hang up first that kind of thing so Aww. that's kind of like how it started uh we've been married got married in 2009 so we've, uh, it will be our 12th year being married here in december yes after year three we was good but in person <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, the beginning, the beginning part. You know, we need not, to do a whole, we need to do a whole journey change on like marriage in those first couple of years. You just gave me a whole other idea. So y'all be ready when I call y'all back. Okay, <laughs> be ready for that. Be ready for that. Now, now on this journey, so y'all have this awesome love story. Y'all get married, and then infertility. So talk, talk to me a little bit about this, you know, um, and for those watching who may not know what it is or for those to whom it is very close and dear to the heart, talk to me a little bit about what is infertility and you all's infertility journey because we understand that every journey is different. And I'm sure that when you all met and in your dating years and in this love story, I'm pretty sure that this was not something that you all could have thought or expected would come. Right. So, you know, growing up, you have this whole, like, you got this life plan, right? So I had this life plan. I was going to go to college. I was going to get married. I was going to have a kid. Um, So, you know, on my in my mind, you know, I was like, okay, by 25, I'm going to do this. By 26, I'm going to do this. Right. Um, so um, we got married and probably within maybe like a year or two, you know, we started saying, okay, you know, we want to have kids. Mm-hmm. Um, So it, it just won't happen. And I was like, well, Okay, so went to the doctor, like you're supposed to, and get your little fertility workup. Um, mm-hmm. Everything was good on my end. I was like, okay. So um, I was like, well, something ain't right. So I was like, Curtis, you need to go to the doctor. Now, you know how men are. And they don't like to Come go on. to the doctor. Come on. Got to push them, make the appointment and all that. So um, made the appointment and... Um, that's when we started figuring out that, um, well, maybe it was Curtis. So infertility, you know, you kind of think of like in the black community, like what? Because, wow. you know, they look back historically, you know, black women, black families, you, you always like you're very fertile. Um, and, you know, even going back to like, you know, slavery days, um, a woman in her prime in regards to the fertility, she was worth more than someone who was older. Um, so even it's just one of those silent, I'm, I'm not going to say a silent killer, but it's just a silent struggle that a lot of couples and women and men go through. And male infertility isn't as common um, as uh, female infertility. So. Um, Back then, you know, Curtis was a lot bigger. Um, so here's like, you know, kind of crossing with the weight loss journey. Um, so he went to see um, urologists and they basically, you know, he gave his um, his stuff in a cup yeah. and um, they told us that, you know, well, you're big. 
you know, maybe you need to lose some weight. And when you so say that, big, how big? Like for, for people who don't know Curtis, who don't follow Curtis online, because we got to share those hashtags. I mean, those those uh, handles because y'all are inspiring. I'll be following both y'all like, what are they doing today? Uh, but so when we say big, some people might be like, oh, he was 200 pounds. But what do we mean when we say big? When we say big, I was 500 plus pounds. Um, so yeah, that was that's the, the scale of big. And I always felt like it wasn't weight because I've seen people heavier have kids. Um, so, you know, you try to put your, yourself into other people's places and say, hey, how can they have kids if it's a weight situation and other people that are bigger wouldn't be having kids right now either. Um, but, you know, you just follow the doctor's orders and things like that. But, yeah, that was what he said. He was like, well, you know, they they did the, the first analysis. They were like, well, we don't see anything. Your weight can be definitely play a factor because when you're bigger, that's really what a lot of things point to. Um, any kind of medical issue can be pointed to that. But that's usually what they point to first. Uh, so I was like, OK, all right. Well, that's that's kind of what started the whole weight loss thing of it all but that didn't pick up until years years later but yeah wow wow okay. awesome. so that was like 10 11, that was 10 years ago that we started this thing wow um, so you know when when you know and I was I wasn't I wasn't small either I was my highest weight I was three like 320 something yeah. I was 320 some something so um it, I started first in regards to um losing weight and I know that you can't make anybody do anything they don't want to do yeah. um but at that point you know kind of you know every marriage ex experiences its own things and so this was this was our this was our struggle. Yeah. Um, I think it was more or less like I internalized everything. So I kind of didn't talk. I didn't communicate with Curtis that well. Like, so there were times I know he was probably like, why is she so mean? Like, I, oh, I you mean, just had an attitude. You just had an attitude. Did, like literally, like I woke up like this. <laughs> wow. Um, and so like I was dealing with my own things and I was just like, you know what? I don't know that I just channeled my energy into something else. Um, and so I don't know how Curtis felt about it um, in regards to his feelings and in, in regards to the fertility struggle. But I just know that I kind of, at some point I kind of blamed him. I was like, this is your fault. Like mm -hmm. if this wouldn't be going on if it wasn't for you. So fix it like right now, like you need to go do something about it. Wow. Wow. And, and Curtis taught us what were, what was, what were you thinking? I mean, that is heavy. That is a lot. Could you yeah, feel her attitude? Like, talk I to did, us. I did. I, I, I most definitely did. Um, I did definitely put a strain on things and I, I, you know, I, cause you always granted, I've, I've never been a vocal person as well. Um, I've always been very internal with my with everything going on. So I never really, like she said, I never really talked to her and said, you know, she would always be the one that started the conversation about, do you want to have kids? Then let's do this thing to have kids. And I was just like, well, like, yeah, I do want to have kids and that, that's what I want. But then when that kind of hit me, I kind of like went inside myself. Like I was like, okay, well, if I'm, if I'm already big, um, I'm just going to remain big and we're just going to have to ride this out and we're just going to have to take it, that kind of thing. Uh, even though she was trying to push me like, well, you know, you, you, you need to be doing this. The doctors say your weight is the issue. So you need to be doing this. And I kind of just, you know, just went into myself where I was just like, well, I'm already big. I've been big my whole life. And this is just how it is. So I didn't, we, we didn't really have those conversations and say, you know, this is how I'm feeling. This is how you're feeling. Let's try to meet in the middle or at least let's try to make a plan of action to make something happen. Um, that didn't happen until like, like you said, 10 years later where we're doing this, but yeah, you definitely, you definitely could feel the, the strain. Um, it almost got to a point where it was uh, like, she had made, uh, comments before was like we just feel like we're just roommates we're not even husband and wife anymore we're just you know we just see each other we're here in passing um you know you you kind of don't want if you're not trying to lose that weight then that means you don't care about me those kind of conversations came out at that point and it was just like you didn't you, you know you didn't want things to get that far um 
but when we say we had a cup a rough couple of years that's kind of like what it was was the whole blame game and yeah I still I still blame myself because I'm just like why I've always been a sick kid um like I've always I'm the middle kid and I actually found out today was supposed to be middle middle kid day but <laughs> you oh, I, day, yeah, I was like, I, I've always been the middle kid. I've always had, I've always been the sick one with asthma, with, you know, leg surgeries and things of that nature. So I was just like, this is just, uh, and you know, you don't want to blame anybody, but you're like, Lord, like what, one more, one more thing you've added to me that I can't do or, or something like that. And it's just, it gets to you. It definitely gets to you. And Things have definitely gotten better between me and her over the years because eventually we just actually started conversating and, and trying to get through and saying, this is what we're going to start doing. Wow. So that communication was key because it's interesting because those people y'all are describing, those people who were, whether it was butting heads or playing the blame game or this or that, or even a physically bigger, those aren't the people who I physically or even emotionally see right now. Right. And so I see people like Erica, I know you better than Curtis. And even you, you're all, you know, your energy is like up and you're, you know, you're going, going. And Curtis, even on your social media, I'm like, what is he trying today? You know what I mean? Because it's just so positive and you all smile and y'all are glowing. And, and so with that in mind, there, there are these shifts that have happened. And my question was going to be like, what was that? Because there is a couple that's watching you all right now and they see themselves probably with tears in their eyes, but they see themselves and like, yep, his fault. Yep. Her fault. Yep. It's go just going to stay like this, but you all made the decision that y'all weren't going to stay there, that y'all weren't going to do that. And that y'all, uh, y'all really birthed like communication, like in there. And so how important has communication been in this journey of weight loss, of marriage, of infertility, how important has communication been for you two? It's been extremely important. Um, I will say um, COVID um, was amazing for us um, because it made us like me. Okay, I'm the type of person I'm always I'm always doing something. My hands are always in something. Like I don't like to sit still, and like I feel like God was like, sit down. Wow listen and follow instructions so I said okay sit down. right <laughs> okay God <laughs> I, I heard you loud and clear um but I think that was a time um like within the past two years that's when we literally started to just focus on us it wasn't about um having it wasn't about having a kid it wasn't about anything it was like you know what if we aren't good and if we have a kid there's no point in bringing a kid into chaos or frustration wow. so we literally just started spending time together um I would work and then you know he would go to work and when we were home we were together it wasn't like we're watching tv mm -hmm. or anything like that it was right. like we were together like Curtis is really into like anime and Japanese movies and like I don't like reading subtitles because I don't know <laughs> they say it so I was just like let's do something else whether it's like playing a game or just sitting on our on our balcony just chilling um so we were just in in the moment with each other and I think that was a big a really really big turning point for us um and I kind of put out the you know everybody's saying well you know people say this and I know they don't mean any harm. Right. Um, well, when are you going to have kids? And when are you going to do this? I'm just like, you know, when God's ready, well, you need to put your legs up and turn to the left. Girl, left not the left. Up. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> not turn to the left. Yes, turn to the left. If you want to have a girl, you need to do this. If you want to have a boy, you need to do this. And I just like, I just kind of blocked it out. I was like, you know what? Let me just work on self um because self wasn't good and we weren't good so mm -hmm. um we just started listening to each other and talking whether good bad or ugly we had the conversation mm -hmm. um and I think that was the big turning point for us um are we perfect no do we still have moments absolutely mm -hmm. but it's a conscious a conscious effort like I'm always big on like choose your attitude choose your interaction yes. and that's and that's how we go um we we're gonna make this marriage this situation what we want to make it so I would definitely say COVID set us down but we yeah. were already in the process of doing yeah. it and that was just like the here you go 
Um, and I think we became closer. Um, Curtis lost his brother last year. And so um, actually the whole family became closer because I wasn't necessarily as close with his side of the family. Mm -hmm. um, so like me just like having, getting a better relationship with his mom was um, like, I've never really sat down and talked to her. And I was like, Miss Vanessa, you funny. <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's where I get it from. And so, so it's just like, just, I think that, and you know, he may have felt that I was connected, like my family's here. And so I'm with, I talk to my mother every day. Yeah. I see my mother at least two, three times a week on Sunday. We go to church, we go out to eat. My cousins are calling me every morning. Like we got, we got a whole, we got a whole checklist of everything that we do every day. So I think just being intentional about our relationship was definitely one of the best things that we did. Yeah, and that, yeah, and as she was stating, um, we had already started certain things. Uh, she didn't mention it, but in uh, December of 2018, um, he basically like started her weight loss journey and things of that nature. And I was kind of like on the um, kind of like on her her coattails because I didn't want her to be by herself. Because I'd always, uh, even you know, like I said, mentioned before, I, I've always been a, a bigger uh husky individual or however you want to however you want to call it i've been big bone but um but yes uh once she started that that process i uh, wanted to do better and learn she was like well okay well if it is a weight thing that's going on with her infertility let me go ahead and and go that route and then i was just like it got so bad and i tell people this and they're just like no you're lying it got so bad that i was when we were getting a house i was like i don't want to I don't want a house with stairs um, because I don't want to walk up the stairs. Like my knees hurt. So it got that bad. But How old are you, Curtis? Like you're young. Y'all are young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're both, uh, we're both 35. 35? You turned 36 this year? No, he's, he's 30. You don't <laughs> forgot. You don't forgot. His birthday is next week. It, he's turning 36 first. No. Yeah, yeah actually, 36. It's 37. Oh, 37. It's, it's, it's an odd year, so it's 37. So, yes. Yeah. So, so my birthday till December, so he older than me. See, y'all, so y'all are, see, so you got to count that. See, so y'all literally are this young couple and stairs are a conversation in yeah. buying a house. Yeah. So, and that's, and that's the thing. Um, I was, and that kind of like was a breaking point because I always talked with my, um, my mom because she ended up getting weight loss surgery and that's always been something in the back of my mind. I was like, maybe that's the step that I should take. She started uh, on her process and losing the weight. And then I was just like, well, I can't let her, I can't let her outshine me. Right, 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 right. <laughs> she was going to be good. Come you know? on, come <laughs> on, okay, all you know, right. I, was like, I, I, can't, I can't be the one talking about, I can't walk up these stairs and she up here, skip to the, skip to the right. loop. So I, I was just like, all right, well, let's, let's do that. I started looking into the weight loss surgery, but then I was just like, no, let me, let me look into keto and trying to do things on my own. And then something clicked, like she said, um, pandemic definitely helped me because I was able to start cooking my, you know, not buying a lot of pro overly processed stuff, cooking my own food, that kind of like the weight started coming off. And then, uh, and then we're, we're, we're here. So now we, we re we're revisiting uh, back where we were saying, hey, the weight's off. Let's, let's get back on the, the infertility or basically before we even knew it was really infertility, like what exactly is going on. Right. I go back to the same urologist and I want to say it's been like seven, it was seven years ago. And he was just like, Curtis? Like he remembered. Wow. He, was just like, he was like, you look like a whole different person. Curtis, how like, much have you lost? Like, and, and you too, y'all have had like a major weight loss. Remember that y'all, if it just, for those of you tuning in, please be reminded. Curtis said he was over 500 pounds and Erica said she was over 300 pounds. So what can we give me, uh, if, if you don't want to give me exact numbers, approximate number, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with, how much weight have we lost family? I myself lost uh, 300. I'm in the 215, 225 range. So yeah, I've lost 300 naturally. Uh, I'm like at 80 something. Oh, and she's not, she's not, I'm just 80. That no, it's, is it's, it's still, incredible. Yeah. You're just like, Amy, you know, that is, <laughs> y'all, y'all together have lost almost 400, like what in the world? And I can only imagine that had positive health benefits. Like, like I'm sure it had a ripple effect. Like, 
y'all, this is incredible. And I love the authenticity of your journeys. I love the way that um, you all are just so candid. Right, so it's not this perfect story of this, that, like, no, you all had uh, your motivations and you had your inspirations and you had your lows. And, and here you are here being an inspiration to so many people following you. Now, if people want to know more about your story, okay, because I could talk to y'all forever. If people wanted to know more about your story, if people wanted to connect your story or perhaps get, because can we just say, like, it's, infertility is expensive, yes? Because I mean, I, I believe it's expensive. So talk to me a little bit about that and how people can, um, how can we support you? What can people do if they like are watching, like we have to sell to them, we have to connect to their story. What can people do? I was the one who was like, I don't want to tell anybody. Um, but since we kind of put our business out in the streets, um, I have gotten so many messages um, from people like, oh my God, Erica, I, I'm dealing with the same thing. I'm just like, well, why haven't you said anything? Right. Like, well, they're probably saying the same thing. Well, I, because I didn't say anything. Right. But um, so back in May, um, after we had kind of had all these um, things happen, um, I was like, you know, I was at the doctor and um, I was sitting and like, I got a new, a new doctor and she's like, awesome. And she was just like, I was crying and she was, she was crying and um, there is a doctor, a new doctor that came into the office. She just branched off and opened her own um, reproductive endocrinology um, place. And she walked in and she was just like, she was like, Doc, the doctor has been talking about you. And she's, she's just been like marveling at your story because, you know, they had all our records and everything. And she was like, I want to bless you. And I'm looking at this lady like, bless me with what? Like, what's right. the I'm sitting here. I ain't got nothing on on the bottom. I got on a t-shirt like Erica. <laughs> something like this. So she said, I am going to give you um, a grant. I was like, a grant? Are we in school? Like, what you talking about? No. So she was like, she was like, fertility is expensive. Um, from where we are basically right now, our, we would have to do in vitro fertilization. And I'll let Curtis talk about his specific diagnosis, mm -hmm. but uh, we would have to do IVF. IVF for one round, for you don't know if it'll be successful or not, is $18,000. And that does not include your medications that you have to take, which medications run about eight to $9,000 for just for medications in itself. So you're looking at probably about 20, 20K per cycle if you don't if you aren't necessarily successful in your first round so the doctor she was like i'm giving you a grant for uh what she say eight eighteen thousand oh dollars something like that but you have you're gonna have to come up with the rest on your own i was like i walk i looked at that lady i was like it's covid i can't hug you but i'm right. like <laughs> wait let me let me make sure i put every let me put on some extra ppe I'm going to hug you. And like, I'm sitting in there crying. I get out to the car and I'm just like bawling. I call, I call Kim. I was like, Kim, let me tell you what happened. Kim was like, shut up. So I was like, I'm going to get some ice cream. <laughs> but like, but truly like that was a turning point for me. Like somebody really, somebody else really cares. And so that was the, maybe a week later, that's when we did the GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. Um, because everyone was like, Erica, just ask if someone wants to sow a seed, just sow a seed. I prayed about it. I went to church, I prayed about it. And so we started a GoFundMe. Um, it's called the Journey to Parenthood. Um, so um that is that's where we are right now. Um, we've done lots of um appointments. Curtis has um an appointment coming up in September. Mm -hmm. Um for his last kind of let's make sure that what we need to do to go forward yeah. but that's pretty much how um that got started it started just with just sitting and just being vulnerable mm -hmm. um and I had never been that vulnerable person um because I just I'm just the uh, I'm an introvert but like I'm an extrovert I don't really know how it works that way um I'll talk to anybody but I don't want like I'm yeah. good are you okay? Let me help you. Right. So you don't have to. Um, so yeah, so but Curtis um has his he'll tell you about his own diagnosis because I don't 
Yeah, and and what we found out, like she like she had mentioned before, her side is like her herself is good. Her, you know, the eggs, everything is there. She's when it got her test. It's like she said, she had blamed me. I blame myself because everything that's going on. I think the diagnosis, it's a, it's a rare occasion that it happens because you don't expect men to be, uh, I guess, infertile. You always expect them to be on the women's side, not the men. So it's a rare, it's a rare case. I want to say they said my diagnosis is maybe like 3% of the population. So it's called um, azuspermia. Um, basically what it means without getting a little too graphic is I don't have any swimmers in the pool, if that makes sense. So yeah. you know, kind of, so yeah, so basically that's, that's the long and short of it. It's like the water's there. Nobody's playing around. So he got, he's been working on the, you've been working on <laughs> the, throughout the year. Curtis, I, oh, I can keep oh. going with these. Well, I feel like you got more. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, one more, but, uh, but yeah, so that's technically, technically it. So now my appointment in September is going to be, so, so you know, that's the diagnosis biopsy is next of you know the old manhood um and then we're just going to try to see if there's any 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 gas in the tank um you know i got more of these but um but yeah so that's technically what yeah that's technically what it what's the next step and then once we can find out if there is anything that kind of points us in the direction of where we'll be going so i do want to tell uh you know this is for the men out there you, this kind of thing does happen. Um, don't blame yourself. It's, it's it's not, you know, could be genetic. It could be anything. It could have been trauma that happened. It could be, I don't know. I, I feel like since I was heavier, maybe something did happen because they always ask me, um, did you get injured in that area when you were younger? And, and I was like, I don't think so, but you never know. Maybe I pulled something when I was younger and just thought it was just a, a muscle pain. And then next thing you know, I just went through it because that kind of vaguely pops in my head you never you never know so it's just just know that that happens and you have to like move through it and find your next step of what you want to do so that's what we're doing wow y'all y'all story y'all's journey is incredible look if you are watching this right now you can't watch this and not be touched and not be moved so right now if you're watching this on youtube look down in the comments area and their GoFundMe is there. If you're watching this on Instagram or on Facebook, it is in the um, title, right? The show title. Okay. It's up there. I want you to click there. The Journey Collective, you guys, we are going to go ahead and make a donation as well. All right. So uh, Journey Sisters, Journey Fems, I need y'all to follow suit. Okay. Um, because we're coming alongside of you guys and we are standing in agreement and truly trusting God uh, for what he has for you both. Again, thank you so, so much. And to every single person watching, this. It is my prayer that through uh, this, this journey exchange, you have had laughter, <clears throat> Curtis, uh, that you have had laughter, that you have seen joy, that you have seen God's restorative power, even in marriage, right? Um, that you've seen God's transformative power, even as it relates to their weight loss. And I'm trusting God for God's miraculous power and what it is that he is about to do. So family, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for our time together tonight. Right now, God, we are putting every single individual facing infertility at your feet. Father, we know and we believe that you are bigger than infertility. You are bigger than any diagnosis. You are bigger than it all. You know the desires of not only the Jones's heart, but of the hearts of those facing infertility. You know the pain that it causes. You know the confusion. You know, God. And because we know, we know that you are in the midst of it all. So while you're in the midst, God, would you breathe on these couples, God? Would you meet them at the very point of their infertility? And would you, God, perform a miracle like only you can? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, Jones family, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. Thank you for those of you watching. Look, we love you and we will see you on the next Journey Exchange. Take care. Thank you.